BYU showing Pau'u on the blitz as Edling settles and throws. Complete and incomplete as it's broken up by Fred Warner. Tight end and wing back to the right. Wing back left who again motions on fly sweep. Give to Geis and Geis just follows a surge into the end zone. LSU opens the scoring on a Darius Geis four-yard touchdown run. Six-nothing Tigers as vacating his die. Taking the snap as Mangum and dropping back deep. Throwing it deep down the far sideline. There's coverage and there's an interception. Interception made at the far side of the field. He's a great quarterback, and he didn't play great tonight. No wides in the set. It's tight. The handoff is Geis, and Geis into the end zone for the second time tonight. 13-0 LSU, PAT pending. Trips left, strong side for Mangum. Mangum guns it, low for Shumway. But that's one that you've got to put right on the belt buckle. That's one that Tanner can hit. If I had the answer, I would have figured that out by now, but uh, it's something that we have to look at. I, I, I can tell you one thing, you need more plays. The Tigers play. up 17 zip. Uh -huh. This time they give to the end around wing, and he's met at the three yard line. J.D. Moore was stood up. Make it 20 to nothing. Kick is up, and it is through for three. 10.25 to go. BYU's being blanked. Etling under center. Williams the tailback. Tight formation. Hand off Daryl. Daryl is caught in the backfield, and they're not going to get anywhere. Johnny to the right. Thought about it. Takes oh. off, and he's not going to get it. Thank you, Mark, for the reminder. Turn and hand off Williams, and that one's clearly in. Touchdown, running it right, and right into the end zone for six. 26-0 uh, is the score. we got to get better now. I mean, I'm, I'm tempted just to throw this game out, but... Uh, we need to look at it, review it, and see what we need to get better. But um, we, we need to get this next one. We need to focus on that. And like I said, that's a lot of that is because LSU did that. And it's my job as a head coach to make sure that this, this type of performance doesn't show up again. On the football field, when a player gets injured, he has an experienced, well-trained staff to take care of him. If you get injured in an accident, you have the same at Siegfried & Jensen. Proud sponsor of the College Football Breakdown. Yeah, Christian Cox, former U, David Nixon, former Cougar, here to break it down. And Jeremiah, you were in the Superdome last night. I witnessed had that. Had to watch that thing, yeah. It was rough. I mean, the offense, wow. I mean, we haven't seen an offense struggle for BYU like since 1974. That Michigan game two years ago was pretty bad, but this was worse. What happened to the offense, and how do they fix this? 102 passing yards, negative five rushing yards for 97 total yards. Yes. The offense could just never get on track. They could never get into rhythm, and that resulted in them not passing the 50-yard line. It was a tough go the whole game. Defensively, there were some glimpses of, of, of good, um, but uh, they, 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 they couldn't get off the field as well. Uh, LSU doubled up the time of possession that BYU had, so it was just a rough game all around. And where do you expect a player to succeed in, like, Tanner Mangum? He, he left you wanting more. And let's go right to the tape as we, we look at this. It's a third and it's it's third down and seven. You're going to be crossing the 40 or the 50 for the first time. It's 14 to zero. Look, you got a clean pocket. What do you what more could you want from a quarterback? At yeah, that this point? was right after halftime. BYU starting to move the ball a little bit in a crucial third down, and unfortunately, Tanner just cannot deliver the ball on time and really on target. That that's the biggest thing we see from the back angle. Just low talent. Show he's not able to go and grab it. This was a huge play because I think this kind of took the air out of BYU's offense and they realized, man, this is going to be a long night. We can't move the ball even past the 50. This was their best opportunity, and Tanner uh, just couldn't get the job and done. And you look at his mechanics. He's throwing. He's not stepping downhill and throwing through it. He's kind of thrown off his back foot. You've got to make those throws on third and seven. Yeah, let's talk about the um, Squally, Canada. I mean, the, the run game especially. I know LSU's tough, but what do they got to do to get this run game going? Yeah, it's a place, right? You negative five rushing yards for the full game. You know, you got to run downhill, and this is where you look at Squally Canada. You look like he, he didn't want to be there. As we look at the tape, uh, you got to be running downhill. You even if you're running into the teeth of a defense. And a lot of this goes against you know playing against a strong LSU front seven, but it was one of those deals where on almost every running play, one of the LSU defenders won their one on one. It was able to kind of blow it up in the backfield, and BYU's running back, similar to how Tanner could get going throwing the ball. Billy's running backs couldn't get going running the ball. And in, in, in this pro-style offense, if you can't run the ball, then you definitely can't pass. It can't set the pass. And so it was just, like I said, a rough night all around. And, and like Coach Sataki mentioned, this might be one of those games where you just burn the film and move on. Well, if you're, it was an awful night. Let's, let's not sugarcoat this. Even a Cougar can't sugarcoat this. But if you're looking for a bright spot to build on, the defense, because without some of their stands, they're deep in their own territory, this could have been a lot worse.
Yeah, I mean, D Darius Geis, what, what more can you say? This guy came into the game from last year averaging over seven yards per carry. He only averaged five, so I guess that's a bright thing to take away from this game. Uh, but this play in particular was huge. Yeah, you come up with a fourth and one stand, you know, where LSU had driven the entire game. This was pivotal, right? You look at the, t the D tackle here on Tonga, and you look at Fred Warner here on the, as a stud linebacker here to the right. This is where you can win at point of the attack, and this is what the 4-3 gives you that Kalani and Elisa Tuiaki run. You get point of the attack, you get in the backfield, and then Fred Warner can come off and scrape up a, a good TFL to, to keep him out of the end zone. Like you said, there's a bright spot. Kairos Tonga, a freshman, you know, helping get, contribute. Fred Warner coming and mopping up. This is something they can build on, and yeah. they're going to have to build on it to get ready for this big rivalry game this week.